Welcome to Stock Gnome 46. Okay, well, not really, because the app indicator is on. God darn it, turn that off. So this is not this is this is Stock Gnome 46, and uh, this video has been requested time and time again, and I think it's about time that I go and I update it to meet Gnome 46 and Nabora 40, Fedora 40, Cash EOS with Gnome, whatever. This is going to cover it all. And I'm going to do it in a way where it's simple and easy to understand. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up a new tab. And I'm going to do extension manager. Okay? We're going to do flat pack. This is probably going to be your only flat pack. Hopefully, it's going to be your only flat pack. We're going to go here. We're going to copy this. All right? This is the installation. This is how to get it done. And I already do have it installed, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. I'm going to maximize this. We're going to go all the way in. And this application is incredible. It allows you to do everything you need to do. As you can see, I'm already installed and ready to go. But next, once that's installed, you're going to go find it. It's going to be somewhere in here. There it is. And I'm going to open it. This is going to be what you see. All right. This is everything that comes pre-installed with Nabora 40. Cache OS is going to have none of this. Uh, normal Arch Linux is going to have none of this. So when we go to browse, we're going to install user themes. First thing, as you can see, that activates my user theme. Second, we're going to install the extensions list because we want to be able to control our extensions from anywhere. This is another thing you're going to install if you're on Cache OS or again, uh, you're on stock GNOME 46 with Arch Linux or normal Fedora 40. This allows you to pretty much see all the stuff that is supposed to be in your system tray. Very good app. We're going to go to load more results. And as you can see, I don't see anything else I want to add there. So we're going to start with Arc Menu. Arc Menu adds a start menu right here. See that? And I have it changed, so it's down bottom. It's kind of funny that way. Next, we're going to add dash to dock. And this is the one. If you want a taskbar like Windows, you'll add dash to panel. But I am a dock user because it supports my workflow better. We're also going to be adding blur my shell. And if you want desktop icons, you will add GTK4 desktop icons NG, which is called ding for some reason. All right. So now that we have that, we're going to add just perfection just like that as you can see my desktop's coming together slowly we're going to type media and i'm going to be adding this and i'm also going to be adding this both of those applications make major changes that allow me to have my audio and my input and let me see certain things it does enough changes that it lets me know when my microphone's on and so on and so forth now this allows me to see what song I'm playing up there. So I'm actually going to mute my desktop audio for you guys. And I'm going to hit play on a track. Uh, and as you can see, some white snake starts playing. Okay. Pretty cool, huh? And if I hit pause, give it a second, it's going to disappear. Uh, but it will not disappear from in here, which is really nice. So we have everything okay well almost everything if you are a tiling enthusiast which i know a lot of you are there is uh, an application called tiling shell and if we install that you'll see this and then we'll be able to do this okay i have a video solely based on tiling shell that you can check out if you need to and there we go welcome to my desktop but we need to go over my settings so first things first, we'll access this. Turn all three of these on because with them off, it's not doing what it's supposed to do with them off. But when they're off, this is less, it, it has a worse design and you won't see which inputs you're using and so on and so forth. Okay. So next we're going to go to app indicator. We're going to turn that on. You just leave that on default. Uh, if we go to arc menu, and we head to menu button, set this to two, 
and then we're going to browse for a new icon. If you're on Nabora, select Nabora. If you're on Cache OS, if you're on Fedora, if you're on Arch Linux, if you're using Pop OS for some reason, or if you hate yourself and you're using Manjaro, or if you really hate yourself and you're using Gerudo, I don't even think that Gerudo has one here, thankfully, but pretty much it has an icon for every important distro, okay? And you can actually head here to Menu Layout, and you can choose whichever one you want. I chose from the modern, like here, you want Plasma? There's Plasma. It's ugly, it, but it works. Uh, if you want Insider, it's ugly. Actually, that's not ugly at all. That looks nice, and it works. You could choose whatever you want. You want the old style Redmond Windows 7 look? There you go. I think that's what Windows 7 looked like. It's been a very long time. I think this was... No, that's the newer Windows, and there's the 11, and there's AZ. There's a, there's like a bunch of stuff that you could do. You can even have a uh, Pop! OS one, right? If you wanted a really ugly look. And these are my personal opinions and try to understand that I don't like the same things that you're going to like. All right. Thanks. Uh, you can fine tune things. I think menu theme is where. No. Is it uh, visual appearance? Autumn centered. Off. There you go. If you want top centered like with Pop! OS, you can do that. So I'm going to leave it top centered. At least there's something up there that I can do. So when I hit the ski... You know, there you go. Easy and done. All right, so we need to move on again. So we already did all those, and now we go to Blur My Shell. Now this video is gonna be a tad long, so stick with me, okay? If you haven't already, subscribe, especially if you're new here. Don't forget to hit the like button to support me. Now, for native Garrison Blur, I turn it to max, and I turn the brightness slightly up to 0.80. And the reason I do this is because it looks better. For radius, I turn it down to 19, and you'll see why in a second. Don't touch any other option besides that. You can exit out of this. Again, for here, I turn it to 0.89, because I want this a little bit brighter, and the radius is maxed out. Radius means blur. If you want your applications to look like mine, so where I have this to have, uh, there's no blur, right? But what if you want it blur? Add the window, we got the blur. Now it looks fancy pants. You could do that by just turning this on and you can turn any window that you want into having blur, including applications like CIDR or OBS or even Vestop if you need to. I can't show you that one, but it is possible. And it allows for an overall better, sleeker look that GNOME should just have by default. So there you go. And you can adjust the transparency, the occupancy, the brightness, all of it. So if you wanted a darker window, right, you could do that. Like, look at this. Turn that all the way down. But I kind of like it just right there because that looks the best. All right, moving on to dash my dock, dash to dock. And as you can see, I got IntelliHide off because I like to dock around at all times. You can change this according to you. You want a panel, you have a panel. You just got to click that one button. Uh, for launcher, I set it to move at the beginning of the dock. I turn off mounted volumes and I leave trash can to be shown. In appearance, I shrink the dash like that because it shouldn't take up so much room. And I switch this to dots because by default, it's going to look broken and the dots are going to be on the icons, which you don't want. I leave this as it is because my theme takes care of the dock. And once again, moving on to extensions list, leave it as is. But for just perfection, there's a lot of changes in here that I do. So I'm actually going to supersize this and we're going to go to customize. Now. For panel button size, I set this to two. And the reason being is because if you set it to zero, it's too squishy. If you set it to two, it tends to be the right amount of, you know, um, spacing between the icons where it actually looks very professional. And as for the panel, the, the panel indicator, like padding size, I set this to zero. 
Now, the clock menu is on the right, and I set it to 20. So you gotta scroll down to click 20. And this is where I set my dash icon size to 32, but lately, I've liked 40. I've tried this on my laptop, and it looks hella fancy. I don't know why, but the bigger dock just looks better. Now, there's other applications in here. For this, I set this to center, okay? I go to label and I set this to 150. That's it. No other changes in here are necessary. Uh, for tiling shell, I don't really do anything. User themes allows you to use what's called uh, tweaks or gnome tweaks, which you'll have to install on Arch Linux and other things like that. But this is where I set new mix circle icons and white sir dark and white sir dark for new mix circle. If you're on Arch Linux, grab it from the AUR. If you are on, oh, that was weird. If you're on Fedora, you just go sudo dnf install numix icon, and there it is. There's also square, but we don't do square. We do circle. Now, cause I already have it installed, it's basically gonna tell me no. But again, you're doing this for the first time. And the next thing we're gonna go download is this shiny piece of stuff. It's called Numix folders. Okay, and this is so we can change the color of, well, what we need to change. So in here, we're gonna open in terminal. We're gonna do sudo slash Numix folders. And that allows you to change your icons to anything you want. I normally go with style four now because I find it a lot sleeker looking and it's gonna refresh the, it's gonna refresh everything. So you just have a clean look. And once that's done, it's gonna exit and that's all you need to do. As for white, sir. We go here, this is the file that we need. We're going to git clone this down. It was last updated two weeks ago. And if we head in here, you're going to see that I have it. So in this folder, you're going to do install dash L. And this will override Livueta and allow you to have your little. It just changes the way that everything looks. It's pretty nifty. All right. I think I covered everything. That's the look. That's the style that I go with GNOME. But of course, we're missing one last extension. And actually, we're missing two, two last extensions. One is called Impatience. We're going to install that. So what it does is it speeds up animations so things are a little bit quicker. And I like to keep an eye on the weather. So I install what's called Weather O'Clock. So you can see it adds it right there. So now when we do this, it's nice and snappy. It just feels faster. It's nice. You're going to run into some issues. If you're running different refresh rates on multiple monitors, GNOME is going to have this weird thing where it has to take a second to sync all the refresh rates together. And that's going to cause a small amount of lag. This is not a GNOME issue because it also happens on Plasma for me. This is more of a compositor issue where they don't know how to fully handle it. And it's a bit sad. But it is what it is. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want this wallpaper, it's in my Discord. When you join, click the Linux link to get access to the Linux channel. And uh, the wallpaper channel is not like a forum now. So it's a lot easier to search through and to find the wallpapers that you need. Bye, everybody.